What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. So Chantal learns in less than two hours the reality of the situation. She's not doing a whole lot. And the chat, her beezers, the ones that are supposed to be the most supportive, they are really the ones that instigate so much of this. Now, Chantal acts on that, but the fact that she essentially leaves them during this because they will not stop talking about reaction channels, Chantal you are going to have to be the one that changes the direction of your content. You cannot continue to come online for one, two, three hours and just sit there and smoke your shisha and, and chitter chat and assume that they're not going to bring up what's going on in the community. And that's what you're doing here. You're drinking coffee. You're smoking your shisha. You're saying hello. The chat instantly tells you, hey, the shisha is really loud and it's annoying. It's louder than normal. And you tell them too bad. This is my unwind time. I was busy all day. Chantal, that's no way to talk to people that pay to interact with you. There's dogs barking in the parking lot. And these things, you really get the idea, are the most excitement of her day. They ask her why the parking lot is full of buses. And she says it's because people around them work and they need to have transportation to construction sites. She says that she's not going to be eating fast food. Because some of them are bringing up the Krabby Patty. Some of them are bringing up the Adams Family Whopper. Someone in the chat tells her she should stay after FFG. Since she's still a Canadian citizen. She says that no one knows what's going on behind the scenes. And she kind of does this with, you know, a smile and a smirk. Chantal, we always know what's going on behind the scenes. Nothing. You know, when you sit there and you talk about all the hard work you put on the treadmill and we don't see the results. When you get out of breath just walking a couple feet. We know that there's nothing going on. Just be honest. Just say, listen, I'm not going to do anything about it because in many ways, I'm the one that provokes all of these things. We saw what you did yesterday. You tried to delete the posts as if you didn't, but you are the one that provoked the response. What did you think was going to happen posting FFG's mother? What did you think she was going to respond with? I'd love to know. I'd honestly love to know what you thought would happen. You don't have to take sides with someone to understand that she instigated that entire situation and she can be upset about where it led but she is certainly the one that started that she says that it's nice she can just come online she can sit here with her friends and you know they can be nice to her she can be nice to them and going forward that's all it's going to be have dinner with me she laughs that she isn't doing the treadmill online and maybe she's not even doing it as much she actually uses that to make a very, very distasteful war joke and then seamlessly talks about her favorite fast foods. Of course, she talks about camping and how they're still going to do it. And the big revelation was the travel plans. But of course, she can't talk about it. But they're going to be leaving soon. She says that, you know, she's got to get on the treadmill whether she wants to or not, because once they travel, she's going to want to be out doing things. After saying that, she's on for another 90 minutes. She gets up once. To their credit, they try to hold her accountable. What did she have to eat today? They ask her. And she refuses to tell them. She says, you know, some channels make videos on that. And it's overwhelming. She doesn't like when that happens. So she's just going to stick to doing her updates, her journey. Chantal, I guess my question would be, how can it be overwhelming if you don't watch it? They ask her what she's going to do for Halloween. Now, if you recall, in Thailand, that was the big thing. As soon as I get back, fall vlogs, Halloween, well, now she says all she can do is put a background on the TV. That's it. She goes over hair care, what she uses, how she uses it, her income, paying off for debt, saving for travel, movies she's seen, movies she wants to see, actors she likes, actresses she doesn't like. She then jokes about Sala's second wife. Sala's second wife gets no attention because Sala's always in the chat, always gaming. But, you know, she'd like if the second wife could come around and do some of the cleaning, do some of the cooking. And she says that she's going to rearrange the pillows to make it seem like more people live there. Chantal, to me, what I find most intriguing is your whole month trip to Thailand, right? The one where you couldn't get Julia Spade because Sala was going to be leaving any day. And then Sala had this Vandalay fragrance emergency, and then he couldn't leave. But now that you're back... Now that you're back, all he's really done is play the keyboard, stay in your chat, in-game. So how did he go from, you can't leave, this is an emergency, 
to he has four to five, six hours a day to essentially do nothing but either be at your beck and call or sit online while you're online. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. She talks about how she would travel for foods. She talks about, you know, Philadelphia having the cheesesteak and then perhaps not realizing Philadelphia is technically on the East Coast, saying she would go to the East Coast for lobster. And of course, she talks about constantly how tired she is. They ask her, you know, if you're tired, why don't you go for a walk? You used to talk about how walking kind of energized you, revigorated you, refreshed you. And she says, well, now it's too busy outside. And she can't see well at night. She likes places when they're less crowded. She was watching a travel vlog, as an example, and she saw how many people were in China, and now she's concerned about going there. This is Chantal constantly moving the goal. So, for example, when it was too hot, that was the goal. I can't work out. I can't go outside. It's too hot. The goal is that it has to be cooler. But now that it's cooler, now it needs to be less crowded. The goal is there has to be less people. This is why nothing ever gets done in terms of her health, in terms of her health journey, in terms of her weight, because she's always rearranging a reason that she can't do something. She goes back over to the trip and she says, you know, to do this, and these are her words, quote, I need to get in better shape. And of course, this trip is why they got the GoPro. And Sal is definitely going to go this time. And it's not going to be Thailand and it's not going to be Cuba. She goes over how hard it is to plan out a trip, exhausting, buying tickets, creating an itinerary. And she says she's going to push herself this time like she's never pushed herself before. Because she says making videos is her job. And that's why they have a couples channel. But they want the couples channel to actually be a travel channel. So in order for that to work, they kind of have to build momentum. They have to go place to place. And she wants to do that. She says people are going to be really surprised. She's just going to show up one day and they're going to say, hey, here we are and so and so. The part for the GoPro also came today, ironically enough, but it's the wrong part. So they're going to have to keep looking. And she says, looking back, she realizes how she wasn't prepared for Thailand. And it's okay, because she's going to use that to help her get healthy. She's going to get on the treadmill. She tells the chat to stay away from the toxic community and bees with her. You know, an, an hour of beesing, watching her smoke and try to count in Arabic is far more entertaining than anything else. And she says that she's fluent in multiple languages. She's trying to learn. She speaks beginner Arabic. It takes over an hour, but the chat starts talking about reaction channels. And she brings up how they're obsessed with her. They're obsessed with ALR. She's just deleting comments at this point. And she says that she should never have had her family put online and that it was, quote, creepy and weird. Well, Chantal, you support people that do the same thing to others. And, and as I said, you are the one that provoked that. You put FFG's family online, which invoked a response. You might not like it, but it's what you did. She talks about when she was back in Canada, the wheelchair she would take and if she had a movie made about her life, you know, if John Candy was still alive, that he would play her. The chat tells her Megan Fox would actually play her modern day. And she says that she learned that John Candy may have passed after eating a large plate of spaghetti, so she never does that before she goes to bed. I mentioned she gets up once during the scream. It's to get cereal and bread. And when she returns, she said, you know, despite having sugar, the cereal isn't that sweet. And of course, she's been starving. She says this happens when she doesn't eat, and she takes her insulin. She talks about how frustrated she would get about daylight savings time when she worked. So again, a story from 20 years ago. And she says that, you know, yesterday was terrible, but today it's just all out of sight, out of mind. But it doesn't stay that way for long because the, the chat, they're asking her to do things. You know, some of them are literally tired of seeing the eating and chatting. And she says she's going to do things. She's going to go to the winter holiday park. They'd planned this before. They never went. She was going to do bumper cars with Sala. She says to just stay out of FFG's chat, stay out of reaction channels, because she feels like they won when they get a reaction out of her. And she says, you know, her mentals are so much better today, just ignoring it. Chantal, again, you instigated everything yesterday. You tried to cover it up. You deleted the posts. But you are the one that caused this. And sitting here three, four, five times in less than 90 minutes and trying to portray that's not what happened is just insanity. But then we learn a little bit more because she says, you know, all of this is for clicks and views. And she's glad she doesn't have to rely on other people's content for views. So Chantal, is that not a two-way street? When you put that video up, 
speaking about FFG's mother while you had dinner. Was that not for clicks? Was that not for views? So when you do it, it's for something different. It's defending yourself, I believe. When other people defend their self or react to it, well, that's clicks and views. I don't understand where we're drawing the line here. She says that, you know, people salivate over her getting angry. People salivate over the ability to make content with it. For example, FFG went on kick. And then she she describes FFG on kick very specifically to where the chat realizes she's watched it. And they kind of ask her, you know, why were you going to watch FFG on a totally different platform? You know, you're sitting here and you're saying, hey, this person does all these things and I, I can't stand to be around them, yet you're intentionally seeking them out on a completely different website. And she said she never would do that. She was just watching them through another reaction channel. And then she tries to create this argument that if she hated someone, she wouldn't want to watch them all day. You know, she really can't get a full video out without someone bringing this up. She then withdraws her apology saying that everyone is hateful, everyone is a bully. And when they get the bear, in, in this case, in her own words, she's referring to herself as the bear, you know, they don't like it. She fights back and everyone cries. She says we also all smell like something Salah would just love, which, uh, you know, okay, Chantal. They ask her if she's worried about her channel. She said she's not. <laughs> you know, everyone has done worse. Everyone else breaks terms of service every day. And what she did wasn't breaking terms of service. She's allowed to say she didn't care if someone had passed. It's just fine. And at this point, I think she realizes she's not going to get anywhere. You know, the friends that she believes she's built online are not her friends. They're there to troll her just as much, if not more, than anyone else. So she abruptly leaves. And in seeing what's happening, she basically tells them the next time they start this, she's just going to start blocking them. There's not going to be any warning. As I said, Chantal, go right ahead. It's worked wonders for you in the past, and I'm sure it will work wonders for you in the future. She proclaims to everyone she has a better life than them, including us, and logs off. I'm going to leave you with the top comments from the last video. I appreciate each and every one of you supporting me so much, not just the whole week, but yesterday and hopefully today. You know, with that said, I'll be back as soon as I can with more commentary.